SMT Nation, we back. Nation, I've been getting a lot of questions about this whole AT&T open RAN networking collaboration they're doing with Ericsson and Fujitsu, and some people seem unclear about what open RAN means, what it does, and why AT&T is going in this direction. So I wanted to make this video, offer some of that clarity and explanation to kind of help you make sense of all this. All right, so Electronics 360 has a good article on it covering the open RAN piece and the collaboration between the companies. I'll be sure to link that for you in the description. Ways to support the SMT YouTube channel down in the description as well. All right, so what this really is, and, and I said this from the first, absolutely first video on this news. This story about like Ericsson and AT&T, you know, teaming up for this open RAN commitment, you know, this network for like the next handful of years, this is as much a story it is about ORAN as it is about their partnership. All right now, one big piece of this is Fujitsu, and I've made it very clear about the direction of this contract. Fujitsu is a very necessary component of this contract with Ericsson. So the direction that AT&T is going with it, which is open RAN, basically gives them a couple of advantages over closed RAN. All right, so open RAN is the ability of a mobile network operator, in this example, AT&T, to use any hardware that they want from any vendor, whether it's, you know, radios from company X, radios from company Y, or it's, you know, switches from company Z, or whatever. All those things interoperable when it comes to open RAN. And what this does, it allows the companies like AT&T who build the networks to have a complete uh, limitless possibility of vendors they could choose from for different types of gear. It allows them to scale their network better. It allows them to reduce costs and reduce operational expenses and CapEx and all those types of things. It, it just, it, it's a great thing for a business. Now, the one thing that does have its, you know, cons with respect to open RAN is there's some technological limitations, right? So like we've talked about the massive MIMO and, and Verizon's disliking, uh, you know, open RAN for that reason. And th that's legitimate too, but that this is all about cost and scale. And that's what AT&T AT is doing here. And that's where Fujitsu comes into play, right? Fujitsu has ORAN compliant radios ready for AT&T. And I can tell you right now, this stems between communication uh, between AT&T and DISH. DISH was the first, is the first, ORAN network in the United States. They are a Greenfield 5G network, standalone 5G. And they have a very strong, healthy relationship with Fujitsu. And I can tell you that during conversations with John Stanky, CEO of AT&T, and Charlie Ergen, the president of DISH, those conversations were discussed. And, you know, Fujitsu had to be mentioned. And AT&T was looking for proof of concept, and that's where it is, right? Nobody else can say the same, at least not in North America, right? And Fujitsu does have business in North America through DISH, so there is some familiarity there. So now you guys kind of understand how ORAN works. You understand the importance of Fujitsu within this partnership and this contract. They were necessary, right? They are the ORAN piece, if you think about it, when it comes to the vendor gear. And of course, you know, Ericsson will be kind of, you know, the, the, the brains behind the whole thing, you know, with respect to the, the upgrading of antennas and installations and the tower sites and those types of things. But a major provider in all this is Fujitsu. And, you know, there's there's proof of concept. There's evidence that they can pull this off in supply gear and it's reliable and those types of things. And it's proof in the dish network. So it really does make sense. Now, um, I know that the... The deal between Fujitsu and Dish only valued at, I don't know, probably a couple billion dollars. May not seem like much, but Fujitsu is a relatively small company. And that put them on the map and that got them this deal. You best believe it got them this deal. And this deal is big for Fujitsu. It's as big or bigger for Fujitsu than it was for Ericsson, if you think about it. Right? So they're going to capitalize on, on this opportunity. And you, you better believe T-Mobile is watching this. And trying to figure out what they're going to do moving forward with ORAN. And Verizon's watching from the outside too, but Verizon likes to do things on their own. And I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure what their take is on ORAN outside of the fact that they don't like the fact that they don't have a standards-based MIMO 
massive MIMO component yet. So they, they've got their reservations. But yeah, there, there's some stuff coming down the pipeline as we learn more about what Fujitsu is going to provide to AT&T and how it performs. We'll see that pretty soon. But uh, I'll be seeing it here because they got work to do here in Ohio. They're going to be switching out all that Nokia gear. Uh, stay tuned for more updates and commentary videos from the SMT. Subscribe for more and turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys all on the next one.